So little me, what do you think of Kenji being here today? I'm glad he's here. I'm a little guarded and reluctant. But I like the way that he's changing things. And I'm curious. So little me. Remember earlier in the session where Kenji said he wanted to be confident and comfortable in all aspects of his life without needing this crutch of being the victim. Remember that? Yeah. Do you agree with him on that? That that would be a great thing? To let go of that crutch? Yeah, I just need to feel safe. And if you felt safe, would it be easy to let go of the old crutch? Oh, it would be great. All right. And are you aware, little me, of any part of Kenji that um, perhaps doesn't want to let go of the crutch? Yes. There's a part about not knowing how to get our needs met. If I can be safe without it. And if I can be enough without it. Well, let's just um, imagine for a moment that you can get your needs met without the crutch. You can feel safe and you are more than enough without it. If all those things were met, do you think that part would let go of the old emotion of shame, the old crutch? I think so. All right. It's, it almost doesn't know what to do without it. It's had a role and a task my whole life. Well, what's a game in your childhood or adulthood that you liked playing? Monopoly. Monopoly. Well, I've got a suggestion for that part, which we'll talk to you about later. That part can just spend its time playing Monopoly. Wow, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't know what else to do. But there might be some other interesting things it could do instead. But Monopoly is one option. Now you might think I'm kidding about that, but I'm actually only half kidding. Because parts do need to keep themselves busy if they're bored. Would you agree? Yeah. The, the, yeah. Parts, if they're bored. Now, if, they're, if they've got plenty to do or they're fine relaxing, no problem. But if they're bored and they need something to do, we need to help them find something that's fun and enjoyable or at least satisfying. You know, I always thought I had to retask parts, but you just said something really powerful, which is just not doing anything. Parts can just be relaxed if they want to be. That's kind of a new understanding. I remember I had a client, and actually probably dozens with this particular um, issue I'm thinking about, where, where the part was in control of fear. And I've had so many clients at least dozens, it's possible much more than dozens, but part, the part was in charge of fear and it was making the fear function go off way too often. That feels very similar. And so what we did was we told the part 
to be in charge of a very small segment of fear, particularly fear of physical danger, but not fear of other things like job-related fear mm. or um, a deadline or something like that or something that wasn't really a danger but was something that needed to get handled. And so what ended up happening was those parts or the part just relaxed most of the time and only came out when absolutely necessary. And guess what happened to that type of a client? They relaxed. Those types of clients began relaxing mm. because fear didn't have to get triggered every day from work or from family or friends or anyone else. Fear just got triggered if there was a tiger running down the streets of San Francisco. I've actually tried to, I've talked to it about that before and asked it to just look out for things like you know, speeding buses. Right, physical dangers. Really big ones. Yeah. And so by doing that, the part was able to relax much of the time. Because how often are there tigers running at the streets of Los France, San Francisco? I mean, the last time I saw a tiger running around was at least a month ago. It just doesn't happen that often. I think you'd have to go to the zoo. No, there was one on Montgomery Street. Didn't you read about it in the news? No. Yeah. There was a tiger running down the street about a month ago in um, was it January. January. There was a tiger running down the streets of San Francisco, and um, it was looking for an ice cream shop or a yogurt place because it was, you know, it had a craving, and and it couldn't understand why everyone was so scared of it. So it walks into the to the ice cream store and says, "I'd like a vanilla ice cream, please." And the clerk said something like, um, we're closed. And, and the tiger walked away thinking, why are all the shops closed all of a sudden? <laughs> you don't remember this in the news? Yeah. You know what? I might be exaggerating slightly. <laughs> I love it. So just allow yourself to breathe. And in a moment, we're going to talk to the part that's in charge of shame. Yeah. And let the tiger story just kind of sink in as you realize that there's a tiger out there that likes vanilla ice cream. Well, when I said I exaggerated, um, it wasn't so much I exaggerated as I changed the details of the story a little bit. I have to admit, one of the details in particular was off. It was chocolate ice cream, not vanilla. Sorry about that. But the rest of the story, though it's not 100% true, is true enough for our purposes. And just allow those connections to kind of weave in your mind as to what the heck a tiger eating ice cream has to do with you. And if you're not sure what those connections are, that's perfectly fine because they're deeper connections than the conscious mind can, can figure out. But just know back in the depths of your mind that the tiger story has a lot to do with you. A lot. Oh, and by the way, after it finally found an ice cream shop willing to serve it, <laughs> started yelping that ice cream shop. And the ice cream shop got a lot more business after that. And their claim to fame later, which was just a few weeks afterwards, was that we serve everybody, including tigers. So just continue to breathe and relax. And as I count from five to one, let that part, the part that wasn't sure what to do if it didn't have that same role that it had before, let that part emerge as I count from five to one. Here we go. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Part. What may we call you? Shame.